Hey guys, check this out. It seems you can find nearly anything on Pinterest these days, including how to make gunpowder the old fashioned way. But this isn't necessarily an idea that's new. The recipe for gunpowder has existed in encyclopedias ever since there were encyclopedias. But today we're putting it to the test. Now, I've been meaning to try this experiment ever since I started creating YouTube videos, and it's taken until now to finally get around to it. Now, you may remember in a previous video, I took paint cans and broken up pieces of stir stick, put them all together, and threw them in a fire to make homemade charcoal. Charcoal has a lot of different uses, but the reason I made that batch was for this experiment today. Now the three main ingredients we need for making our old-fashioned black powder are potassium nitrate, charcoal, and sulfur. My go-to for potassium nitrate is this brand of stump remover, which is 100%, and I found a ready supply of sulfur by going down to a local gardening store and picking up a couple different varieties. Of course, charcoal you can make yourself. It's the black stuff left over in the ashes of your fire, and it's pretty much just a big chunk of carbon. In my experiment making charcoal, I tried using paint stir sticks. I also tried sticks and twigs I found on the ground, and a bag of sawdust. They all look a little bit different and come from different sources, but at this point, they're essentially made of the same stuff. Now, charcoal is basically elemental carbon. It's number six on the periodic table of elements, and sulfur is number 16. The sulfur itself should be a relatively pure element, but it comes in different sizes and shapes as well. None of these materials burn very quickly by themselves, but if you mix them together in the right ratios, the results can be explosive. So now that we've gathered up all of our individual ingredients, the first step in making our black powder is to crush them all into very fine powder. It's very important we do this in separate containers because we don't want those powders to mix together yet. So let's go ahead and get busy crushing this stuff up. Beautiful. This is looking good. I'm getting excited. So update guys, I've just got all three of my powders finely floured and this is how I did it. I took individual containers and a blender and I blended it into a fine powder and then used a strainer to gently sift out only the finest particles. Now in the case you don't have a blender, you could always use something like a mortar and pestle. This is basically a bowl with a stick that just crushes up the powder. In either case, it's still a really good idea to use a very fine strainer to filter out only the smallest particles. Now comes the fun part. We get to mix it all together. Now I'm gonna be using the traditional ratios that trace back thousands of years to when the Chinese first discovered this and used them in their fireworks. It's a very simple ratio of 75% potassium nitrate, 15% charcoal, and 10% sulfur by weight. Now potassium nitrate by nature is hygroscopic. It pulls moisture out of the air, and that's not good for gunpowder. So before we mix these powders together, I'm just gonna bake this in the oven for about 25 minutes. Okay, so our potassium nitrate's been in the oven for 25 minutes. Let's get it out, let it cool down, and mix these three powders together. Boom. Now to keep things nice and easy, I just mixed up a 100 gram batch. I used 10 grams of sulfur, 15 grams of charcoal, 75 grams of potassium nitrate. Now that we've got these powders in contact, it's important to be very, very careful and do this in a fire safe area. Good idea to have a fire extinguisher nearby or even better to be outdoors in the open air. When we mix this, we don't want to use metal because it's conductive. We want to use something like wood or plastic. The idea being that we just want to prevent any static electricity from being discharged into the mix. Our white powder has just become black. Black powder. It's extremely light and fluffy. That's very surprising, probably because of the charcoal. I wonder if I could blow bubbles in it. Not very well. <laughs> now just to make sure this gets mixed up a little more thoroughly, I'm gonna pour this back and forth between two cups, give it a shake, give it a stir, and just do my best to make sure these three materials are intimately combined. Keep away from sources of ignition. Boom! And it goes off. So there we go. I've been shaking and stirring this thing about as intimately as I can get it for the last two minutes. Hopefully by now it's thoroughly constituted. So let's pull out a small spoonful, light a match, and see if we can touch it off. All right, weighing our composition, the verdict is 
98.5, so we lost about a gram and a half in the process. But that's okay, because we've still got a lot. In fact, 100 grams is probably too much. Right here, guys, is our homemade black powder. Looking good, looking good. It's beautiful. So I just realized I measured out a heaping tablespoon of this powder, which is way too much, because if this works, then when it goes off, it's gonna make a huge cloud of black smoke. But that's something I'm totally willing to do for you. It's time to light it off, guys, and I'm a little bit nervous because this actually is quite a bit of black powder, but let's do it. Here we go. Nice. Nice burn. And that put off quite a bit of smoke. That's what I would expect black powder to look like. I would say that was a success. So that worked, and it pretty much worked the way I was hoping it would. It looked like kind of a slow burn, but that's only because it's in the open air. If we crammed this into something like a firecracker, it would go off with a bang. Look at the residue here. You just see a little bit of ash, but it looks like everything has burned completely. It looks like our composition was just about perfect. Very pleased. One more thing I want to try really quick is make a small line of this powder to make an improvised fuse. Beautiful. All right, test number two. I've laid out a nine inch strip of powder to act as an improvised fuse so we can test the burn rate. Here we go. Sweet. So a nice, very consistent, slow and steady burn. That's exactly what we wanna see. Now this burns relatively slowly because it's in the open air. If it were in a confined container, the burn rate would increase exponentially and probably make the container explode. So guys, our black powder works. It looks great, it burns really well. So let's do a quick summary of how we got to this point. We start off with three different materials, potassium nitrate, charcoal, and sulfur. We ground those materials into a fine powder, then used a strainer to sift off the finest materials and mix them together in a ratio of 75%, 15%, and 10% respectively. We used a plastic straw to stir them together, then taped two cups together to shake it for about two minutes, which resulted in this fine, dark gray composition we call black powder. And black powder doesn't necessarily have to mean gunpowder. There are far more uses for it than that. It could be used for making fuses, rockets, and fireworks, and in the early days it was used as a blasting agent for mining materials out of rock. So in an end-of-the-world type situation, you could theoretically use this stuff to play Minecraft in real life. But it is a very dangerous substance, and it is regulated by the ATF which means it may not be legal for you to manufacture or possess. But don't worry, because you can just run down to the local sporting goods store and pull something similar right off the shelf. Hey, thanks for joining me for this video, guys. We now know how to make black powder. I'll be looking for you in the next video. Talk to you then. Now that we have this stuff, for our next video, we should try making firecrackers. Hey, guys, quick reminder that limited time King of Random t-shirts are now on sale. Click the link at the top of the description or visit randomgear.com. See you there.